the pixel. In this video, we are interviewing one of the officers from the Ministry of Women, Youth and Family Affairs with regards to the issue affecting women and children in our society. Okay, so uh, the first question with regards to our specific topic is what is the overall function of the ministry in relation to the area under its mandate role to look after? Thank you very much. So the Ministry of Women, Youth, Children and Family Affairs, as the name suggests, um, it works to advance the rights of the vulnerable groups in our country, um, mainly women, youth and children. Thank you. Second question is, is there any challenges known affects children from assessing quality education? Yes, um, there are many challenges that affects children from not accessing quality education. Um, some examples would be like economic status of the family. Yeah? Uh, for example, if the mother and father uh, don't have a, a good earning income, um, it, they may not be able to pay for school fees for children. So uh, that is one. But then when we talk about children, we talk about anyone under the age of 18. So it could also be if um, they have a disability or any um, type of disease that they have that might prevent them from accessing school. Yeah. Um, for Solomon Islands, we know that 80% of our population is in the rural areas. And I think uh, in terms of geographic location, that can also be a barrier for uh, children attending schools, like if their villages are um, located very far from where schools are. Okay, the third question, please. What are the main challenges or issue affects the ministry overall function to address the matters affecting women, youth, children, and family in our country? Thank you. So I think for the Ministry of Women, Youth, Children and Family Affairs, the main issue that affects our ministry is because we are the smallest ministry in the Solomon Island government. So um, we always receive the least budget, um, although the population that we're targeting is a very high population. Yeah? So in terms of resources, uh, financial resources, even human resources, we are very limited. Um, but I guess our strength lies in uh, networking with uh, key partners and stakeholders to make sure that um, whatever messages we have, it gets across to all the different provinces, even out in the islands and even in uh, Honiara. So I think, um, yeah, that's one of our biggest challenge is um, in terms of resourcing the ministry. Yeah, thank you. Our next question is, how did culture and custom become a barrier to women for having some status like men in every sphere of development in our country? Thank you very much. So for Solomon Islands, um, we have, uh, our culture is very male dominated. Um, even though we have um, some provinces uh, practice the matrilineal system and other provinces practice the patrilineal uh, system. Um, still, there is uh, evidence of male dominance in terms of decision making, um, accessing resources, things like that. Uh, for example, uh, whenever there is a development to be done in a village or community, uh, usually it's the males who will go and um, talk about uh, the decisions to be made and it was like in terms of payment even though it is uh, even though there is a matrilineal society where um, women are the head of the land but still when the decisions are made it's the men who make the decisions and um, they control whatever income money that comes from the uh, developers so um, I think one of the biggest barriers um, for women's uh, de development is the uh, what's this male dominant culture in our country. Okay, our okay, uh, uh, last question uh, mm -hmm. is there any uh, achievement that mm -hmm. makes the achievement so far uh, in relation to the effort uh, that uh, put in place mm -hmm. to 
antrik sedih semua afek ini wumahan jurang harusai Okay, thank you. Yeah, so there has been many achievements um, achieved by the ministry, our ministry, in terms of um, uh, recognizing women's rights and even children's rights. So um, today in place we have uh, a national policy on gender equality and women's development, which focuses on the different thematic areas um, that women have uh, uh, issues. Yeah. Um, so, like in terms of women in leadership, women's economic empowerment, ending violence against women and girls, uh, accessing education, also accessing uh, sexual reproductive health, and also gender mainstreaming and women peace and security issues. Um, we have in place a national policy in which uh, this national policy it guides our work in the ministry, and also if we have other um, stakeholders or partners that are doing work in the similar field, they have to make sure that they align their work to our policies. Um, in terms of the youth youth division, there, there is a national youth policy, which also um, makes clear the different um, areas which government wants to help focus on their youth. And similarly, for children, there is also a national children's policy. Um, in terms of legislation, um, we have the Family Protection Act, that is a joint um, custode, custody between the uh, Ministry of Women, New Children and Family Affairs and the Ministry of Justice and Legal Affairs. And this um, act, it criminalizes domestic violence. And another act that the uh, Ministry has also helped, um, has been heavily involved in, is the uh, Child, Child and Family Welfare Act. Yeah, so that one is uh, it's more like a guidelines on how to um, how to bring up children and um, yeah for for child protection yeah, but uh, that act is still not been implemented yet because it has to be gazetted first before um, it becomes enacted. So um, we're still doing awareness on that so that people in the province know about it as well. So there has been a, a very like, much achievement from the ministry um, and also it could not have been possible if we did not have partners, donors, stakeholders, all the players involved. So um, I think that's one of our strengths too that we have a lot of support from different uh, stakeholders and partners. The issue affecting women and children is become a matter of question in our region. This should not be blamed for the responsible authority to continue. But it is everybody's role and responsibility to stand animal.